Wait, 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 wait. But what? Did you say derelict asses? Asses? Because you did not no. say pass. What? I dare you to rewatch. Uh, can you be tripping? I ain't thinking about no asses here, man. March of the Ages, new KVK is coming soon. We're here to discuss what's it all about. Today we got Puddle Cakes here with us again. Welcome back, sir. How are you doing? Fabulous as always. That's amazing. So today we are going to talk about the new KVK and everybody's super excited. So we're going to be giving out our, you know, honest feedback, opinions, and what we assume it's going to be. So guys, if you guys have any ideas or any extra information that you guys want to share to us, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. And also don't forget to head on to Mr. Puddle Cake's channel as well and subscribe to him. All right, so let's roll the intro. Right, so puddle cakes first of all we're going to talk about the march of the ages um are you excited and what do you think about this i am definitely excited because there's different elements that it adds into the game and uh we'll go over a few of those elements and it'll allow people that are losing to possibly come back mm. it's pretty pretty neat actually i want to know more about that now it's a totally brand new KVK setup. Nothing that we have ever seen before. If we're talking about big update, like this is the biggest and the baddest update that we're going to see here in 2021. I don't think there's going to be an update that is going to match this update. You know, this 1.0.48. This is biggest, baddest. And you know, Lilith is really working on making Rise of Kingdoms really good. So um, let's get on with it. Super large maps. So that means more kingdoms, man, right? Maybe. Maybe. There's a possibility it could be interesting where they could have, what, 20 kingdoms? 24 kingdoms? 28 kingdoms? That's going to be absolutely insane. I mean, that's, that's a huge map. Like, you know, one thing that I want to bring out to the concern is lag. That's going to be hella insane. If there's so many kingdoms in one KVK. But it's going to be really fun. The competition is going to be nice. The strategy is going to be very different. There's a lot more emotions. As we know, this game is full of emotional people. <laughs> and there's betrayals. There's you know all these kind of stuff that's going to happen. The more kingdoms, the more stuff, the unpredictable stuff can happen. Yeah, I definitely agree. I, I hope they figure out a way to fix the lag by loading in and out each zone because mm. because each map has there's six or eight or you know your passes and stuff like that but it should almost have like some sort of zone so that way when you go and scroll over it actually reloads that zone which would create less lag because they're almost on their own server but yeah I, I just wish they would change it something different but yeah they i, I don't know you're absolutely right. It's going to be insanely laggy. But. It, it, it's going to, it can be. Honestly, you know, with the experience that we have been, you know, going through lately, honestly, the lag has been minimal now. It's not compared to, you know, a year ago. Like the lag is more insane. Actually, there's some improvements already. So, okay, let's go into the next one in here. Ancient Pagodas. Something new. This is a structure. And earlier, before we got into the video, you talked about something about, you know, the storyline, how, you know, it's about the barbarians. And I feel like it's just going to be another holy site that we got to take over. Yeah, but I think the the nice thing about the Agent Pagodas is it's going to allow you a foundation stone, mm. which is almost going to be like your uh, your city hall. What the hell? Like a your home base or maybe alliance fortress or whatever like yeah, that. Yeah, an alliance fortress. So then maybe you don't have to build, mm. you know, delete all your alliance fortresses all the damn time. And that would actually make kvk a little bit less tedious i guess so this could just be like you know the crusader fortress from the previous kvks 
could be very interesting. As, as soon as you capture it, then you can start, you know, be able to move your city and teleport. I wonder if there's going to be like a certain specific teleport that you can use in this one. And I wonder if it's going to be limited. I didn't talk about yeah. it, but, you know. Yeah, maybe it's like an obelisk, you know, like you build it and you can only port like 12 cities over or something like that too. Teleport in that small area. That would be very interesting if that's the case because there's going to be a lot of, you know, planning strategy and prioritizing on who's going to be in there. Yeah, or that could actually be the next part we're about to talk about, which would be crazy. Yeah, so so the Ancient Pagoda, you have to capture it, then you can move your city. Another thing that I'm concerned is, what if is you know, if this ancient pagoda can be attacked when you know the enemy gets into your zone and this pagoda gets demolished, and then the players that are teleported there, now they can't move their cities. They have to bubble. What if they don't for, or, or what if they forget to bubble and then they're gonna get zeroed? So maybe that's where the exile also comes into place. Maybe your own king can exile you to get you out of that area. I don't know. So let's talk about the forward camps. You know, governors can establish forward camps at the front lines, which can critically, which are critically important structures for healing troops and supplying reinforcements. So it says here, governors, possibly every single player is going to be able to do this. It's not one of those things that only leadership can do it. So what's your take into the forward camps? I think it's a cool idea because pretty much like maybe you're fighting on the north side and you want to help out the, an east side flag. So you create a forward camp, which maybe you join another group joins or maybe you send five sets of, you know, sets of troops and then you send it there. And while you it ports there, it brings your five sets of troops. And it heals it heals the group around it. I think that's a pretty cool idea. So it's kind of like similar to the champions of Olympia at some point, you know, with the replenish points. But this thing, you can actually determine which placement you want it in the map. I'm interested how the heal is going to work. Is it going to be like the uh, mm. the Karak, Karak bosses too, where it like it had that little healing node, that totem pop up? And then it would heal like the whole thing in an AOE every second. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, that's interesting. They didn't really talk about how their structure, you know, how their mechanism for the healing troops is. It's interesting. And it says applying reinforcement. Does that mean that you can like re, you know, readjust your troop placements? You know, like if let's say you only had 100k, then you want to put bring in 200k without going back to the you know home base. It's interesting. Uh, it says here also governors carefully place their forward camps will contribute significantly to victory in the map. So that's going to be interesting. I think it kind of ties up with the supply radius, right? So, yeah, it, it's, it's almost like directly involved with the supply radius. So, and yeah, let's talk about supply radius. It says here it's an area centered around the governor's city or forward camps f for garrison troops. Is hugely impact your troops' ability to do damage. Governors should try to limit their engagement within the supply radius as much as possible to ensure troops can continue to deal full damage. So here's what I think about this one. What I think about this one is that it's trying to prevent campers. So you see in in KVK, there's always people camping right, you know, right where the garrison is, like flags and your city. So I think with this, you you can hit your enemy a lot stronger if they try to do that and when you when they're in that supply radius what do you think i i agree but there's one thing now it could be just the translation uh-huh could be the translation but one thing that really throws me off it says governors should try to limit their engagements to within the supply radius as much as possible to ensure troops can continue to deal full damage so mm. Does that mean we do deal less damage outside our areas? That's what I was thinking. That, like, like that would be really interesting. So, it, does that mean that uh, fighting off of our zones are going to make our troops weaker? That's that what I. A, yeah, that would be a really interesting concept to add into this game. Like, really interesting. Yeah, that's what I think so. Because, like, when you said that, uh, should try to limit their engagement to within the supply radius. So. I feel like it's like so let's say you're attacking me right you're you're my enemy and you're my supply radius 
right? So for me, I preferred that you are in my supply radius. And you would probably not want to be in my supply radius because I not could hit you with, you know, full damage or more damage. Go ahead. But but it doesn't say that if enemies are in your supply radius, you deal less damage or they, the enemies no. deal less damage. So, yeah. So it's like it, it's really like if if it goes off of that tan, that little tangent or idea of. uh Like you only deal full damage when you're in that zone. Does that mean that if you're in your zone and you you have a supply radius on that YSS would do triple damage? Oh, that would be disgusting. Maybe. Could you, or like, but why does the, it say limit their engagement? Uh, it it just says to try and it it's trying to tell you to use it to the best of your ability because the supply mm. radius makes you deal full damage. So, mm, okay, like I said, it could be the translation. Yeah, but if it is like that, oh, that's pretty. Because cool. it, it does say Devil here, swore. forward camps for garrison troops, man. So it's gonna be it's gonna be spicy, and for players that doesn't pay attention, they're really gonna pay a lot. The the other really really cool thing about this before we go on to the next thing, uh huh, is so let's say you're losing the ground and they're all over your flank. You can't port your city in. You cannot port your city in. I'm curious if it's gonna allow you to port a forward camp. And a supply radius on that forward camp. So you could pour it in like six forward camps mm-hmm. with all the supply radius, and you could just nuke everything that's on your flag trying to kill you. Your burn your flag. Yeah, that's gonna be very interesting. And I'm sure when this thing first comes out, there's gonna be a lot of loopholes coming out, and we have to look for those, take advantage of those. And then give the devs a nightmare because trying to fix all these all these loopholes that are coming out. <laughs> There's gonna be some mess, messed up stuff coming out. Brand new one, definitely. Uh, you know, uh, development standpoint. There's gonna be one. So okay, let's talk about next one, guys. If you're watching this video, you haven't subscribed yet to our channels. You haven't created a YouTube account yet. Don't forget to do so. And if you find our videos to be very valuable, definitely. Click that subscribe now, and also there's this bell icon. Click that bell, click notify, so when we upload videos, you're going to be the number one, just because you're our favorite, each one of you, and you'll get that notification right away, and you'll be able to see our videos right away first. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about here is the derelict, 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 damn English, derelict passes. So... It says here that it's going to be scattered. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. But what? Did you say derelict asses? Because you did not no. say pass. <laughs> derelict passes. I said passes. No, wait. you did. I dare you to re- we, rewatch uh, that. We, okay, guys, you guys can definitely watch that again. All right. It says derelict passes. <laughs> All right. So the map is scattered with abandoned passes. So the der- derelict. Derelict? God damn, why is it so hard to make derelict? As to as to be impossible to control the transverse. Basically, how I think about this is that there's going to be a pass, and it's kind of the same thing with the game that we play called Infinite Galaxy. In my opinion, like the gates when we play that. When we just have to take the gate and you don't really garrison it. So the gate that I was talking about previously in this game called Infinite Galaxy, guys, if you guys haven't checked this game out definitely go and check this game out now because it's also fun just like rok there's a link in the description and there's a free code as well shinchi tv we have an entirely new youtube channel for just infinite galaxy go check it out in description go download it now take a look at this oh wow they updated the gates too Look, look at that look at how amazing that graphic is wow go check it out now i'll see you there we are in nebula 15 but this one is like random it says scattered random it's with an abandoned passes i don't know let me see where you're taking this one i think they're going to be passes that can't be controlled so if you're in a kingdom that is losing kvk and you cannot get the pass you can still go and rally cities through a derelict pass and cause havoc Oh, that's actually interesting. But I wonder if you still have to defeat the 
the the barbarians in the derelict past, but you don't control it just to get rewards. I mean, there has to be rewards. It's it's an abandoned past. It says oh, it's abandoned. abandoned. So uh, honestly, oh. I think it's just going to be like a way to go th through the wall at certain stages in the map. So I wonder if it's like it's, it says it says like scattered. I wonder if it's random too. Like you'll never know where you go. Yeah, maybe it could just. Because it does say throw a chaotic element into the mix of mix for every kingdom at the beginning of each faces. I think that's a mistype. Yeah, I but mean, I I think it's going to be one of those concepts where like anyone can go through that pass, so you're going to have to have people guarding that pass at all times. Ooh. but you can't garrison it. Because like, I mean, if you think about you think about KVKs, a lot of the fighting is from garrisoning and rallying passes. Yeah. This is going to be very interesting. So this is going to be totally like changing up the game style of everybody. But hey guys, people that are watching, if you guys have a better understanding in here for the der derelict passes, passes, leave it down in the comments section below because we would definitely want to hear some of your inputs. These are some of the things that we just think we're just brainstorming in here. Not really entirely sure what's going to happen. We just wanted to discuss this with you guys here today. But um, so we kind of talked about, you know, pretty much the entire map of this, you know, March of the Ages. It's very unique, very interesting. But the last part that I want to talk about, you know what? They didn't talk about the ziggurat or anything in here. So I wonder if it's still the same. It's still going to be the zig. There's really no big changes with some of the structure so we're probably still going to see some circles some hurion some ruins so and they're just adding new stuff it's very interesting um okay so one thing that i want to talk about as well is the exile and i believe you are one of the players who suggested this to the devs and word for word i believe and they took it and they implemented it so that's an amazing thing um, I'll give my first take into this. Um, I know we all have our own different um, perspective and strategy for this. I think with this exile thing, in my opinion, it's for those players who bubble up and block certain areas, trying to prevent flags to be dropped. It could be used. It, I'm just saying it could be used in one of those ways, I think. But I know you have another input, so let us know right now. Yeah, I I like I like the way that you think it would be used. That would be actually really useful too. But so I don't know if I created this whatever. But in, in the past, I I wrote this almost this exact same thing mm. in talking with uh in the in in the chat or whatever. But uh, so the whole idea is you think about. Do you remember South's account? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we had that issue. So so we had this huge whale player, 280 million power, monster player, amazing. And he kind of went off the rails, not going to say why, whatever. And mm -hmm. he just started killing everyone. Mm -hmm. And he was so strong that we couldn't do much. Mm -hmm. I think this the idea of this is we can do 5% more damage to him for the next 30 minutes. And if he shields... It auto ports him back to zone one, his original province. I think that's pretty neat because then if he's not in a main alliance, he cannot port back into zone three and terrorize people. Now, I feel like there's a condition, two conditions into that. I feel like, first of all, you have to be peace shielded for you to get teleport. But if you're not peace shielded, you'll just take 5% more damage. So when you maybe what you need to do is start rallying and make the make the player peace shield, and when they peace shield, then you use the exile and then they get exiled to zone one, and then or you know what does it say? Um, teleport to their initial province. Yeah, go back to the initial province so that they can't bother people there. Like they're just stuck there, and they you know let, don't let them join any alliances. So very interesting, you know. Um, definitely gonna bring in a little bit of a twist in here and we don't know the cooldown of exile how often you can use it how much is it gonna cost there's i'm sure there's a cost for it maybe gem i don't know so 
it's it's a very interesting skill to add new feature in here in Rise of Kingdoms. Guys, in the comment section below, let us know how would you use Exile and who would you use it to? I I have no enemies, so I don't know who I would use it to if I was the king. If I have that much power, I don't know who I would use it to. Would you use it to somebody? <laughs> I mean, I, there's a lot of infamous videos out there, like when King Talib was, you know, hanging out and defeating everyone, rallying him. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. Th there's a lot of videos out there of people that were just terrorizing and doing what they wanted. And this is a means to an end to a point. I don't think 5% is enough, though. Yeah, it's but not. That's but that's just my opinion. But definitely able to send them back into the initial zone, not letting them in the alliance is just the end of it, really, for them. Because they can't do anything there. It's not like they can attack, you know, anything, really. I mean, they can make their own alliance, but they have to build all these... You know, they can't even make their own alliance. They got to make, like, 50 members to get to build one, really. Is it 50? I forgot what's the initial rule to start, you know, building a central fortress or maybe 20. But, I mean, that's it, guys. I think we've tackled a lot of stuff in here. If you guys have any, you know, comments, suggestions about what we talked about here today, you guys excited, um, definitely leave it down in the comment section below. And if you find our video to be very fruitful, enjoying, and just learning a lot of things in here, just looking at different perspectives from different players in here, consider definitely subscribing to our channels. Don't forget to do so. Um, any last word, Puddle Cakes? Uh, if you don't see Shinchi's videos on your screen every day, make sure you, uh, you, you, you dislike, <laughs> you unsubscribe and resubscribe and hit the bell button because for some reason his has been bugging out and it doesn't always show up. Yeah. So there's been like issues with that. I've actually talked to Google. You know what? I'll put a link in the description because there is some tutorials that they told me that viewers should definitely adjust and, um, yeah, it's just sad because a lot of viewers are not getting the instant notification. And um, they just, they actually told me that they were sending out 100% notification. It's just not as soon as we upload. So join our Discord as well because you're going to get the notifications there as well if you're really interested into, you know, uh, checking our videos out. And we pretty much make videos daily anyway. So here's Puddle Cake City. If you guys want to send him a message, he's not far away from me. You guys can go bug him. And of course, subscribe to his channel. Anyway, guys, rockers, I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to check out our merch, Rockers Never Die.